Hello and welcome to another review of Junji Ito Maniac, Japanese Tales of the Macabre, episode 4. So this one has two different segments. There's the room with four walls and where the Sandman lives. So the room with four walls is a story featuring Soichi. Soichi is a recurring character that Junji Ito has come up with. He is an annoying character. I hate Soichi. I hate every story that has to deal with Soichi. Soichi isn't creepy. He's not scary. And he's not funny. He's supposed to be like a prankster. But he just comes across as really, really annoying. And the fact that they decided to adapt one of his stories pains me. Because it's terrible. I absolutely hated The Room with Four Walls. And I hated this adaptation. But let's, let's get into it. So The Room with Four Walls. The main character is... Koichi. Koichi is Soichi's older brother and he's trying to study because he has finals coming up and so he's trying to make sure he gets good grades but Soichi keeps getting in the way. He keeps pulling pranks on him. Uh, he keeps like making rackets so, uh, and loud noises so that Koichi can't study. He like bangs on the, the roof and starts making noise so Koichi goes and starts scolding Soichi and tells him to knock it off like Stop going up in the attic and making a bunch of noise. And Soichi claims that he wasn't up there in the attic. The next day comes. Koichi is back studying again. And he hears this woman's voice telling him that, um, you know, you're going to get worse grades. You're going to fail your exams. You're going to be the last in class. You're going to get zero marks. Just stuff like this. And he discovers that. Uh, and so Koichi opens up his door and he sees his brother running away. And so he figures out, okay, it's my brother doing this again. So he chases down Soichi, tackles him, tells him to knock it off. Soichi tries to claim innocence, says, you know, I didn't do anything. I was just running because I really need to use the bathroom. And Soichi soils himself. He pisses his pants. And Koichi tells him, like, you know, knock this off. I'm trying to study. And Soichi says, you keep blaming me. Haven't you noticed that the house has gotten cold and that there's been unexplained rapping sounds? It's, it's the ghost. It's a bunch of poltergeists. This place is haunted. And Koichi tells him to knock it off. He knows it's him. He goes back and he tries to study some more. And uh, as he's trying to study, um, things on his room start levitating and falling to the ground. And at first, Koichi thinks, oh, maybe Soichi was right. Maybe it was a poltergeist. But then he, he sees this string attached to the objects. And the string leads into his closet. And he opens up the closet, and Soichi is there. It turns out Soichi is the one making everything move and float. And he chases Soichi once again. And he tells his dad, I need you to tell Soichi to knock it off. Like, I'm trying to study. I can't do that with him. Constantly making a racket and bothering me. And the dad's just a piece of shit. The dad's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've tried everything I can. There's nothing I can do. You just got to deal with it. It's like, dude, at this point, maybe just send the kid off somewhere. <laughs> send him to, like, boot camp or something. I don't know. But get help for the kid. Like, Jesus, like, you can't just let this kid run wild like this. But the dad does nothing. And so Koichi's like, either you do something to fix Soichi, or I'm going to move away. I'm going to move somewhere else where I can work and study in, quiet, in silence. And dad's like, wait, wait, I, I have an idea. I have a friend who's a carpenter. I'll ask him to uh, soundproof your room. Would that help? And Koichi's like, I I'm willing to give it a try. And so the next day... The carpenter shows up. His name is um, Taigasu. Now, this is where it goes different than the manga. In the manga, it turns out that the company that that friend works for, their schedule is full. And they're not going to be able to start work until the next month. However, by that point, finals will have already passed, so it would be too late. So they're trying to figure, wonder, like, okay, what are we going to do then? And that's when this mysterious guy, Taigasu, shows up. And says that he works for the company and that um, his boss is really good friends with Koichi's father. And so he said as soon as he heard Koichi's father needed some work, he sent him right away to, to help him. And the, the guy looks really, really creepy. He kind of looks like a corpse. Like he has like a sunken in face, just big eyes with black circles around them, just really gnarly teeth. And here in the anime, he looks more comedic. I guess, I don't know, not comedic, flamboyant. Like, he just has, like, weird painted designs. Like, he has weird painted um, lines on his eyebrows, weird symbols under his eyes, um, spots on his cheeks and chin. Like, he doesn't look creepy. He just looks weird. 
So I was like, ah, okay. I mean, this is already a crappy short story, and you're just kind of making it even more crappier by trying to make it more goofy rather than unnerving. Because in the manga, he kind of comes across like death itself. Whereas here, he just kind of comes across like a an out-of-work clown or something. But he goes to work on Koichi's room, and um, Soichi's there like hammering nails into the wall and saying, die, 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 as he does it. And uh, Koichi gets pissed off, tells him, you know, knock it off. And Taigasu sees it and he's like, oh, that's some very, that's some mighty fine um, hammering. This kid's extraordinary. Let him work with me on this room. And so, um, yeah, Soichi and the carpenter get to work on the room. Koichi shows up the next day. He sees that his window has been boarded up, and he sees Taigesu is about to leave. And he asks Taigesu, like, hey, like, what's wrong with my windows? Why are they boarded up? And Taigesu explains that the um, sounds can penetrate through the walls, so I've sealed them up. Everything should be completely soundproof. Room should be done. And I kind of glossed over, but um, the name of the... The name of the of the story is a room with four walls. And the reason for that is what he's done is he's built four walls within the room on either side to really soundproof the area. And we uh, see what exactly he means by that because Goichi and his mom go to check out the room. And they open up the door and they see another door. And um, they open up that door and there's a third door. And they open up that door and it's the final fourth door. But as they keep opening it up, the doors keep getting smaller and smaller. So finally he opens up the fourth door and inside is his tiny room. And the room is basically only big enough to fit a small little part of his desk and himself. So he's just kind of cramped in there. And he's like, well, this is weird. This room's like way too small, but at least it's actually soundproof. So maybe I can get some studying done. As long as if I can get some studying done, I'm willing to put up with it for a while. And so he goes in his room and he starts studying. And it, um, he's like, man, it's so weird. Like, there's no sound in here whatsoever. I almost feel like I'm deaf. Like it's just, it's kind of creepy. And then there's this ringing sound, and then like this chirping sound. And he's like, it shouldn't be the time for Kikadas to be in here. And he realizes that it's Soichi. Soichi's playing a prank on him. So he goes up into the attic and he sees like, a way to get into his room. And so we just have this like moment where like, he opens up, he gets in, and he sees that rather than the four walls being like right next to each other, there's like gaps in between them. So it's gaps big enough for people to kind of slip in through. So he thinks Soichi has slipped in through these gaps and he's somewhere inside his room but outside the main area of the room and he's just making a bunch of noise to bother Koichi and it turns out to be true here's the thing that kind of I didn't really care for like in the manga the rooms are drawn really really small so it gives like these like like the the the, the gaps in between the walls are very tiny like Koichi can barely slither himself through them so it comes across as very claustrophobic like it, it gives off the impression that at some point Koichi is going to get stuck and he's going to like die in there. However, in the anime, the gaps look a lot bigger. So you don't really get the sense of claustrophobia too much. Um, but eventually he finds Soichi and it turns out that yes, Soichi was pulling a prank on him. He tries chasing Soichi. He ends up um, like trying uh, during this chase, he falls down in between gaps with a bunch of nails that kind of cut up his shirt and stuff. He continues chasing Soichi. He ends up falling into this murky black sludge. They don't say what the sludge is in the anime, but in the manga, it's sewage. Basically, the sewage waste. So Koichi falls into the sewage waste, and he's like, um, enough of this. Like, this is what Soichi wants. Soichi wants me to constantly try to chase him around. I'm never going to be able to catch him. So instead, I'm just going to leave. So Koichi leaves, and then we just see Soichi, and he's laughing, and then he passes out. And that's how it ends. The manga explains it more. So in the manga, the sludge is actually sewer um, sewage, and basically they explain that by because of the fumes from the sewage and just because of being enclosed in this tiny space, the brother basically uh, Suichi um, passes out due to a lack of oxygen, and he almost dies. But they're able to get to him in time, unfortunately, because 
I wish the little shit did die. He's just such an annoying little character. Um, and it's also explained that the carpenter doesn't work for the company, and that the company has no idea who he is. He's never heard of his name before. So it's this kind of like unnerving thing where it's like, who is he? Where did he come from? How did he know that we were looking for help and that we needed the rooms to be soundproofed? Why did he take such a fascination with Soichi? So it's, it's something that's never explained and it's just supposed to be like ambiguous and stuff. Um, but yeah, the anime just kind of ends abruptly with Soichi giggling and then passing out. In my head canon, when it comes to the anime, he, he dies. They don't find his body. <laughs> I mean, obviously they do in the manga, but I'm just going to pretend that in the anime the version they don't because I can't stand this character. I hate him so much. And this was, uh, it was terrible. It leaves a lot. Like, it ends abruptly, and it doesn't explain how um, Daigorsu, how he explains he works for the company, and uh, the company ends up saying, no, we, we have no idea who this guy is. So a lot of that stuff is left out. So, uh, overall, it, it was just a terrible pick. I don't know why they decided to have this story here. Like, if you're trying to showcase Junjo Ito stuff, why would you pick this story? This story sucks. I don't think anyone's really a big fan of it. I don't know that many people that actually care for Soichi. Soichi is just a really annoying character. But um, we get the next story. The next story is Where the Sandman Lives. At least that's the anime name for it. The actual name for it, like at least the manga version, is Den of the Sleep Demon. And we have uh, a character named Yuji, and he's having coffee with this girl named uh, Mari. And he's basically explaining to Mari that he hasn't slept for three days. And he explains the reason why. And the reason he hasn't slept is because his inner self, his dream version, is trying to escape from his body. Every time he falls asleep, the dream version of him tries to escape and get into the real world. And of course, Mari is like, is this another one of your stories for your books? Because Yuji is a writer. Um, and she's like, you know, you usually tend to be fascinated with stories about dreams and false selves and stuff. That sounds like one of your fantasies. And Yuji's like, no, this is real. Like, I need help. You're the only person I can turn to. And she says, well, why don't you go see a doctor? And of course, Yuji's like, oh, well, thanks for nothing. Like, maybe I'll go do that. He says it like sarcastically and he leaves. And then Mari is like, I'm sorry, like, I don't really believe what you're saying, but what do you want from me? Like, how can I help you? And he explains, I just need you to help me stay awake. And so uh, Mari shows up and um, I need you to tie me up. I tie my arms and legs with this duct tape. Hurry, because I'm getting kind of tired. And um, I don't know if it'll help prevent him from escaping, but I maybe it might. So she does so, and then Yuji falls asleep. As soon as he falls asleep, Mari gets some scissors and cuts off the tape, you know, frees him, and puts a blanket over him, and she ends up nodding off herself. And then she wakes up to some noise, and she sees Yuji on the floor with his right arm sucked into his body and coming out of his mouth. It's this really, like, grotesque-looking moment. And, of course, she freaks out, and she starts yelling for Yuji, and Yuji wakes up, grabs the arm coming out of his mouth, shoves it back into his mouth, and then he grabs his arm, or the like stump of his arm, starts pulling on it. And as he's pulling on it, his arm starts coming out. And he's like, you know, help me. So she starts grabbing his hand and pulling his fingers out and stuff. And basically, he's able to get his hand back. And she's like, what the hell is that? And Yuji's like, I told you already. That's my dream version trying to escape out of my body. I think... It's like the inside version of me trying to come out and turn me inside out. She's like, that's impossible. Like, humans can't do that. And he's like, you just saw it happen. How do you explain that? And she's like, well, there's no way that can happen because what about all your intestines and stuff? Wouldn't they come out too? And Yuji explains that uh, maybe he was born hollow or maybe he became all hollow after his parents died. And um, he basically explains that when he was a kid, he dreamt of flying. And he did everything he could, he, including attaching feathers to himself so that he could fly. And, of course, he couldn't. So he thought, okay, maybe I can fly in my dreams. And so uh, in his dreams, he tried to fly. But his dream version kind of mocked him and told him that it was stupid. Like, why would you try to fly and things? And Mari is like, that doesn't make any sense because in your dreams, you can do anything you want. Why would he want to come out here into the real world where, where he wouldn't be able to do any of that stuff? And um, Kuichi starts 
kind of nodding off and he basically explains that it's because of you. Like he is a part of me and what he desires is you because I desire you. And then he falls asleep um, or he starts falling asleep and Yuji's like, I'm going to go to sleep. I can't keep doing this. I can't keep putting you through this pain. And he nods off. And that's when Mari comes up with the idea. She grabs his hand and she tapes her hand to his hand. And she says, uh, I will do everything I can to keep you from being sucked in. And then um, all of a sudden his arm gets sucked in. And since it's taped to her hand, she, her arm gets sucked into Yuji's body. And she's trying to pull him out, but she can't. She's trying to wake him up, but she can't. And eventually she gets sucked into Yuji's body as uh, two hands come out of Yuji's mouth. And then we cut to uh, a police officer and the landlord uh, arriving. And the landlord opens up the door for the police officer. And the police officer um, asks, you know, are you Yuji? Uh, we have some questions. Uh, a woman named Mari has disappeared. She's gone missing for a few days. Her last known whereabouts was here. Do you know where she's at? And Yuji explains that you're not going to be able to find her. She's no longer here. Um, she's now inside of me. And of course, at first they assume that he's a cannibal. Like, and he ate her. And he's like, no, she's inside my dreams. And we don't get to see like Yuji fully, but this is the inside out Yuji. So the, the dream version of Yuji won. And that's how it ends. So I thought this was a better story. I still wouldn't use it for an adaptation, I don't think. Like there's a lot better Junji Ito short stories out there. I don't know why they picked this two. I guess between the two of these, the Den of the Sleeping Demon is a lot better. The room with four walls just absolutely sucks. It, it was just, it's god awful, it's terrible. And uh, yeah, I just, I didn't really care for this episode all that much. Like I said, I liked the, um, where the Sandman lives or the Den of the Sleeping Demon. Like I, I like that story. Not enough for me to want to see an adaptation of it, but it was okay, I guess. It's a shame that that one is the uh, the shorter episode because when it comes to oh, these episodes with two segments i've noticed that the first one is pretty long and then the second one's a lot shorter and so yeah the the best one was shorter than um the longer one in this case i hated absolutely hated the room with four walls the animation was okay for the room with four walls um the animation for the where the sandman lives it, it was good i, I like that i like the voice acting i liked i liked everything about it i just wouldn't have chosen it like the story is not good enough for an adaptation when it comes to Juji Ito stuff. Like there's way better stories out there they could have used in its place. As for the room with four walls, again, the animation's all right, except um, I didn't care for the um, the way that the rooms were shown. Like when you see Koichi sliding in between the gaps, the gaps weren't small enough, they were too big. So they didn't really give you that uneasy claustrophobic feel that the manga does. The manga makes it a lot slimmer so it's like very hard to get through also i feel like the voice acting for soichi doesn't fit soichi is supposed to be young like koichi is still in high school and he's the older brother however soichi sounds like uh like an adult like his voice just doesn't match it doesn't sound like a kid's voice and um yeah i hated his character he's just a, an annoying little shit <laughs> so i i didn't care for this episode like I said, the, the, the second segment was good, but not good enough for me to want to see an, an adaptation for it. And the first segment just is absolutely terrible. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't recommend this episode. I, I would skip it. it. It was it was terrible. And it's a shame because, like I said, like Junjo Ito has a ton of short stories out there. I'm pretty sure you could have find a better one for this episode. But yeah, there you go. Anyways, hopefully the next episode will be a lot better. But there's episode four, The Room with Four Walls and Where the Sandman Lives. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. Later.